الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, when our loved ones are catching a flight, we get worried. Worried about what? Sometimes we're hoping and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they're safe. We say loving words as we leave them. We pray for them. And subhanallah, we have to lay our trust in Allah. The same applies if people are going on a journey by road. We always are concerned. If they're close to us, we're worried. Sometimes when we're flying ourselves, we're worried as well. Will we get to the destination? Will we not? When we hear about other accidents and people who've lost their lives, perhaps on the roads, uh, on an aircraft, whatever it may be, we tend to worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to be content. Call out to Allah, seek His happiness, read what we would say your, is your dua. Read the dua and lay your trust in Allah. You have no option but to lay your trust in Allah. Hope for the best in Allah. If anything does happen, it was always from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah will protect you generally from the hardship of the journey, the difficulty of the journey. So in Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the story of the Prophet Noah, Nuh alayhi salam. When he was in the ark, imagine what they must have felt. He was a prophet of Allah. He knew Allah would take care of him. But the people needed some contentment. I mean, there is a flood, there rains. There is so much water gushing from all over. What's going to happen to us? Allah says, calm down. What should you do? Bismillahi majareha wa mursaha inna rabbi la ghafoorun rahim. We are setting off in the name of Allah, the one who causes this conveyance to set off to sail the one who controls it, the one who will stop it as well. For indeed, he is the most forgiving, most merciful. So we are taking the name of the one in control of this conveyance. Amazing. Once you've read the dua, you've asked Allah to protect you. And there are some supplications a little bit longer than this. But the point I'm raising is, you call out to Allah at the beginning of your journey. Whenever you're doing anything important, say the name of Allah. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. It's so important even before you eat, you should be saying in the name of Allah. As you get up, Bismillah. As you recline, Bismillah. When you go into your vehicle, Bismillah. When you jump into the aircraft, Bismillah. When you're starting your job, Bismillah. No matter what, remember the name of Allah. It will bring about a lot of contentment and happiness. You will wonder, I'm so calm, I'm relaxed. Even if there is some turbulence on the plane, you'll be smiling. You'll be okay, subhanAllah. Because Allah will take care of your heart. Allah will take care of your heart. If Allah has written your death, He will grant you the happiest death filled with contentment. People look at the ultimate loss as death. In fact, it is not. If you look at death, everyone has to die. For as long as you did the best you could during your life, and you had a reasonable, a good death, good death is where Allah is happy with you. You have succeeded. What more do you want? So be content. People say the worst thing that could happen is you could die. We say, no, it's not the worst thing. Sometimes Allah takes you away when he knows it's better for you to go now. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Oh Allah, keep me alive for as long as you know life is better for me. The moment you know that it's better for me to die, take me away. Because sometimes we may not be able to manage what might happen around us had we been present and not died. So Allah says, I'm going to do you a favor and take you away. What a good death. Allah's written for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us a good death. Getting back to the conveyance, remember whenever you are traveling, no matter what conveyance you are on, even if it is an animal that you are riding, remember to say the name of Allah. And then lay your trust in Allah. Be confident, sit back and relax and enjoy the flight, enjoy the ride. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you ease. One more point, don't break the road rules. Don't break the road rules thinking, I've made my dua, nothing's going to happen. I can drive at 250 kilometers an hour. No, you're being foolish. You need to take the necessary precautions as a human being and what you are taught. 
So definitely you'll have your seatbelt on. Perhaps you will actually make sure that you're not on your phone while driving. You cannot claim, even for a moment, that because I made my dua, it's okay for me to be on the phone. Imagine so many people die because of that. The phones and their use while driving have killed more than drunk drivers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So just remember this point. The point was more to do with contentment when it comes to driving, but we also touched on not being foolish when you're actually on a conveyance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of another very, very powerful method of achieving con uh, contentment, and that is to protect your prayer and to establish prayer. Listen to what Allah says, verse number 114 of Surah Hud. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَى لِلذَّاكِرِينَ وَاصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says, establish the prayer in, at both the uh, times of you know, both sides of the day and a portion of the night. So all five prayers, establish them correctly. And Allah says, you know what? Your good deeds will automatically wipe out your minor sins. The minor sins that you've committed through the day, Allah says, when you do good deeds, those minor sins will automatically be wiped out. Do you know there are sins we commit that we're not even conscious of because of the environment, because of so many other factors? But Allah says, you do good deeds we will wipe out those bad deeds by virtue of your good deeds. That's amazing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is a reminder for those who want to take heed and bear patience. Bear patience. Don't, don't be in a rush. Don't make haste. Be very patient and be patient with people. Patience is a topic that has a lot of different explanations and various angles that it's looked at from. So my brothers and sisters, Bear patience. Remember, you fulfill your prayer. Engage in voluntary prayer. Voluntary prayer is so important because we get so close to Allah that He guides us through everything. The way we look, the way we touch, the way we walk, the way we talk. All guided by Allah because we established our prayer. And while you're establishing your prayer, there is one very important fact that you need to be conscious of. What is it? It is that your character and conduct should improve because that is a reflection of the acceptance of your prayer. When you pray and your, and your prayer is not accepted in the holistic way, it would never reflect in your character and conduct. Your character, your manner of speech and all of that would become worse or it would stay as abusive as it is. But if you are truly a pious person and you pray, your character, your conduct will definitely become much much better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And in Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says towards the end, verse number 120, He says that the stories of the prophets that we've mentioned to you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, we are mentioning them in order to strengthen you, in order to strengthen your heart. And you need to know this. So if that was for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for us too, it strengthens us, it gives us lesson, it teaches us, look, they went through persecution, they went through problems, because that is what Allah created us for. No human being has ever come onto earth and not suffered at all. There have been some form of sufferings. Ultimately, they've died. That's the suffering. According to them, from a human perspective, death is a problem. So we ask Allah to grant us ease, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, Allah says, and every one of those stories that we have made mention of, every time we mention a story, all those stories that we have mentioned the, of the previous messengers, they are there in order to strengthen your heart, in order to grant you that comfort, that contentment. Subhanallah, for all of us too. Imagine reading the stories of the prophets. I sit and think, what if they were not there? 
What would have happened to us? So my brothers and sisters, it's important to go through these stories and to understand that in order to achieve contentment, it's not about smiling at how great the story sounded, but rather it's to look into those stories for lessons. When you learn lessons from the stories of the prophets, you will achieve contentment. They will calm you down. They will give you the happiness. They will give you the joy. Each one of us suffers problems, issues. We have enemies. We have people who harass us, trouble us. We have on various levels. Allah says, go and read the stories of the prophets. You'll be calm. You'll achieve contentment if you have belief and conviction. We move on, my brothers and sisters, to one of the best stories in the Quran. The best, in fact. The story of Yusuf, alayhi salatu was salam. I wish to draw very few lessons from this surah, although it is packed with lessons. But we're talking of contentment. The first thing that I picked up from this surah is when the father tells his son, Ya bunayya la taqsus ru'yaka ala ikhwatika fayakidu laka kayda. Oh my son, don't narrate this dream to your brothers. They will become jealous. They will actually plot against you. Wow. When good things happen to you, you don't need to tell the whole world. Some people may not be happy. Subhanallah, when you've achieved something, when something grand has happened, you don't need to tell the whole world. In the age of social media, we lose happiness, we lose contentment, we lose sleep for many reasons. One of them is we show off even the food that we're eating when we're about to eat it. We show off places that we haven't even been to. We show off so much and we make people burn. What contentment are you going to get? We show off everything every day. We've become little show-offs. Worse than that, we get affected by others who are showing us a life that they don't live. How's that? So this is a two-way problem. We show off a life we don't live and we get jealous of a life that others are not living. It's fake. Learn to live the real life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Don't boast, don't brag, don't show off and don't be deceived by the boasting and the bragging and the showing off of others. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب